All right, I think we're live. Excellent. Well, hi and welcome to the training, which is, of course, why 98% of your website visitors aren't taking action and how they can make sure that they actually are. So most of us, I guess, have websites and we reach a point where we question why we're actually attracting all this traffic, whether we're doing Facebook ads or we're doing organic social media, maybe even you're doing blogging as well, but it's not turning into anything tangible. And I know how frustrating that can be. So today's training is really gonna help you with that. And I'm so excited about this one for a couple of reasons. Firstly, of course, uh, Hello Bar is one of Neil Patel's many, many companies. Um, and I've long admired, admired um, Neil and his work and I don't know how many trainings of his that I've lapped up over the years. So I always know that he's, um, you know, anything that he backs is content rich and hugely valuable. And the second reason is that I'm so excited to be working with the equally talented Lindsay, um, who is head of marketing at Hello Bar and is on the same page as me when it comes to doing marketing well. Now, of course, she's invested far more into testing and discovering what works and what doesn't work than I have. So um, that's what she's going to be sharing with us today so you can learn that. And as you know, I wouldn't put you in the hands of just anyone. Um, and I know Lindsay is going to look after you so well today or um, whether it's morning for you, for us here in Australia or evening, I know, for you, Lindsay, depending on where you are in the world. But um, please make the most of this opportunity. So ask questions, take notes, and really think about um, how this can help impact your business. So I know you have some great things in store for us today, Lindsay, so I'll hand it over to you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Kelly, and thank you, everyone, for being here and showing up for your business. I know um, we've got people from all over the world, so um, a lot of different time zones, but just thank you so much for being here. So grab your notebook, um, shut down all your browsers, and you know, get ready to have an action-filled training. Um, everything I'm going to share today is going to be take action. I want you to be able to walk away from this and start implementing um, everything that I teach you here today. That, to me, is the most important thing. Um, so a little bit more about myself. As Kelly mentioned, I'm the director of marketing for Hello Bar, and I don't want to spend too much time here at all because I want to make sure to get to the juicy parts of this training. Um, but I thought I'd share a few uh, facts about myself, a little bit more about what makes me qualified to even be here and teaching you. Uh, so I have more than 15 years of marketing experience, and I actually started deep in the trenches of email list building. So my first job in 2002 was to to walk around a bar and restaurant and collect email addresses on a clipboard during Monday night football, football for a raffle that we had. Um, so quite a different form of email collection, um, but it was my first experience in really understanding marketing and what it was like to actually capture people's attention. Uh, luckily, email list building has come a long time, a long way since then with technology, and so have I. Um, in my decade plus of experience, I've written a book, I've launched my own coaching business on digital or my coaching business um, that I took from zero to six figures in a little under eight months. I've spoken at conferences all over the country, taught a college course on digital marketing, and most importantly, encountered pretty much most types of marketing platforms out there. Um, I've advertised all sorts of products from Lululemon yoga pants to Shark Tank winning guitar accessories and worked with budgets all across the board. And now most recently, the past two years, um, I've been fortunate enough to be the director of marketing for Hello Bar and get trained by Neil himself. So I'm thrilled to be here um, and I share that all just so you know a little bit more about me and most importantly with all that experience I'm able to use everything that I've learned over the years everything from all of our testing at Hello Bar and on Neil's site and bring it all to the training to you today and kind of make it in a more digestible compact way so you can start taking action today. Um, so a little bit more about what the heck Hello Bar is. Um, and again, I don't want to spend too much time here because I want to dive straight into the content that we have today. Um, some may call it a pop-up software, um, but it's so much more than that. So as we're going through this training and I'm talking about steps that you can start taking today, um, I want you to start thinking about, you know, pop-ups or calls to action on your website um, as more than that, okay? So what I want you to think about is that these little guys are actually the first impression that people have of you on your website, whether it be a top bar on your site 
or having you know some sort of call to action above your fold, um, this is a major part of your sales funnel. It's the first touch point that people have when they get to your site. So that's why I think that they're so valuable. Now, if you've ever seen a top bar um, on a website that says, enter your email address to get this free course or guide, um, that is probably one of ours at Hello Bar. Um, but many people don't know, we also have modals and sliders that you can put on your site and even page takeovers. And I'm gonna show you some more examples later. I'm gonna drop into the app, um, but I just wanted to share a little bit more. And one of the cool things you see here, um, you know, we have a ton of data. We've got over 8,000 signups per month, over 50 million impressions per month, and over half a million signups of all time. And the reason why I share that is because what's so cool is we get to take all of the information from all of our users, all the data um, that we've acquired over the years, and we get to use it to make the very best product for you. Um, so, funny little story about why Hello Bar actually exists. Um, in 2011, Neil Patel, our co-founder, was looking for a way to collect more email addresses and get more leads on his site. He was spending a ton of money on developers and designers, um, and he didn't even know if they were going to work, right? Um, so he actually found Hello Bar and he tested it and it worked really well for him. And the best part was it was super cheap. Um, so he ended up acquiring it. So one of the things I think is even the most valuable part of Hello Bar is we get Neil's world renowned marketing experience. We get our CEO Mike's world renowned sales experience. And then we have a team of digital marketers who have been business owners in the past, who have been digital marketers for many years, and we get to use all of that to be a part of this powerful tool. So I always tell people, when you buy Hello Bar, you, you get our team. Um, so that's why I think it's so valuable and amazing. But the reality is, you guys, and you're here for a reason, is that there's a major problem that exists, okay? So on average, 98% of visitors are leaving your website without taking action, meaning that you're spending all this time, money, and energy to get people to your site, but oftentimes they're actually leaving without doing anything, whether that be clicking a button or going to a certain page or even entering into one of your email opt-ins. Now, you can do the math on this, but I share this so you can actually visualize what that means. So for every 1,000 visitors, you've got 980 leaving, or 10,000 visitors, 9,800 leaving, right? And I, I don't share this to scare you. I just share this so that you can just see the problem. And we're going to talk most importantly today about what the solution is. And yes, really, um, actually, I forgot to say I got so excited. I just hopped in. But please put your comments um, in the chat and in your questions. Um, we'll definitely get to Q&A. Um, in the end, and I want to make sure that you get all of your questions answered. So apologize for that. Thank you, Kelly. <laughs> um, so the reality is, is you're spending all this time, money, and energy to get people to your website um, only to find out that they're leaving, which is totally devastating, right? Um, and so again, we're here today to talk about how to you know, take action. So before we go any further, I want to talk about the elephant in the room. Okay, I want you to type in the chat if you've ever gone into a website and maybe had a pop-up jump out at you immediately and gotten kind of annoyed by it. Or maybe you've said before, I don't know, pop-ups don't work, they're kind of annoying. Um, maybe you had them on your site and you took them off. Or perhaps you've put like a call to action on your site where um, it just says join the newsletter um, or something that's a little bit, yes, Kelly, <laughs> um, something that's maybe not the best offer, but you just knew someone told you that you had to have an offer on your website. So you just like literally got it out there. And I don't want you to be shy um, because I've done this a million times, you guys. So don't be shy typing in the chat because we've all been there. Um, and the reality is the elephant in the room is that oftentimes people will say, oh, pop-ups don't work or I find them annoying. And the reason why is because people are simply using a wrong. But it's not your fault. I mean, the reality is, is oftentimes people haven't been trained on how to actually use them on a site. And that's why I'm so passionate about sharing Hello Bar and the best practices that work for us. Um, because there's just some really simple things you can do uh, to make them very effective. And a funny story, um, just to share so no one's shy here. One of my first experiences with pop-ups, we had a client that was a lawyer and he had a divorce um, page and a business law page. Um, so he had multiple pages on his site, but those were kind of the two main pages. So on the business law page, um, I actually had a pop-up displaying immediately 
about divorce and it said, hey, are you looking to get a divorce? Um, sign up for one of our free consultations on the business law page, okay? So super wrong timing, wrong message. That would be a reason why someone would probably pop off the site or decide that they thought that pop up was so annoying, right? Because they wasn't serving them with the right message at the right time. Um, so. These are just a few of the reasons why people leave sites um, or, or suddenly find that pop-ups can be annoying. Um, and really, I always tell people that if you have a call to action or a pop-up display immediately on a website, it's kind of like when you go to the mall um, and you've got those kiosks in the middle of the mall and people are trying to like jump out at you and ask you if you want um, to get your hair curled or maybe your facial that day. I mean, you literally don't know who they are. I'm not sure if anyone's had that experience. Um, but you know, it's like literally you haven't even gotten a chance to warm up um, to the experience and somebody's just popping out at you. And that's kind of what it's like when you have calls to action and pop-ups displaying immediately. And that's why they get such a bad rap. But the reality is, is they work when done right. Um, and that's what I'm super excited and passionate about showing you here today. Okay, so I want to address one more myth. I want you to type in the chat. Have you ever thought this? I have to have an insane amount of traffic to actually get people on my website, to put their email in, or to get more sales on my site. Type in the chat if you've ever thought that. Like, I have to have a million visitors. I'm never going to be able to be successful um, if I don't. And the reality is, you guys, that's not actually true. Now, I don't want to say traffic isn't important. It is important to drive people to your website, which I know that you're all focused on doing. But what is key is about building a relationship with your community. Those that truly devote themselves to getting to know their ideal clients and building a relationship with them will succeed. And I'm going to show you what that looks like to actually build a relationship with your website visitors from start to finish so that when they get to your site, they're going to be excited to stay and they're going to be super excited to take any action steps that you want them to take. Now, I want you to meet Travis. Um, he's an example of us actually utilizing um, some calls to action in a really simple way that were really effective. So Travis was actually on Shark Tank. He invented a tool that helped teach people how to play guitar. Now, his inspiration was his daughter. He had always had the tool in mind, but he kept kind of putting it on the back burner. His daughter was learning how to play guitar one day, and she just got so frustrated and was ready to give up. This was something that Travis was actually really familiar with. He found that a lot with his past students. Um, so she said to him, Daddy, would you invent that magic tool that will help me learn how to play guitar that you've always talked about? So he actually did, and he went on Shark Tank, and he won. It was really, really cool. Um, but one of the things he was missing is he had people starting to come to his site, but he wasn't getting any conversions at all, you guys. So meaning people were coming to his site, but they weren't taking any action steps. They were a part of that 98%, which is really crazy because he had very warmed up leads because they knew him. They saw him on Shark Tank, yet they were leaving his site because he wasn't building that same relationship on his site that he had um, when he was on TV and when people saw him. Um, so in the first three months of us working with Travis, we actually increased his e-commerce sales by 50% just through putting Hello Bar in a few strategic places throughout the site. So I'm going to share a little bit more how we did that later. I'm going to actually break down the exact steps, but I just wanted to introduce you to him because I think it's a really cool story about the fact that you can also have traffic and nothing can happen, right? Um, so again, it doesn't matter how much traffic you have. It's all about building that same relationship that you have in person um, or over the phone or over social media on your website as well. Okay, so why are people leaving, right? We are here today, we know the problem, but I think in order to like start creating a solution, we have to talk about why people are actually leaving. Why are they taking off on your site? Well, there's multiple reasons, but the major reason is you're not actually giving them a reason to stay. And you may be giving them a reason to leave, whether you, know, you have multiple calls to action on your site and they don't know which step to take first. Or maybe you have pop-ups displaying immediately on your site and people are kind of getting annoyed and hopping off. There could be a multiple reasons. But as you go through this training, I want you to start to think about your traffic coming to your site as a guest at an event. Okay, so I want to use an example. My husband actually sells wine. And every year he has this huge portfolio tasting where wineries he represents all over the world fly in and are all in one room featuring their wine. Now, these are really important wineries, but more importantly, my husband and his coworkers all have to bring their clients from restaurants all around San Diego, where we live, to this event. 
Now, they can't just invite them to the event and let them walk, hop in a room and see over 50 wineries and not know what to do next, right? In fact, I was there, this happened um, last week, and the first thing my husband would say to his clients is, hey, I know that you're looking for a female-owned winery. Head over to so-and-so and so-and-so. I already told them you were coming. Or, hey, I know you're looking for a red Cabernet. Head over to so-and-so. They definitely have what you're looking for, right? He curated the experience. Because what would have happened if my husband had driven all this traffic to his event, right? Um, and then suddenly, after that, he's driven all this traffic there and people are there and they walk in and they see all these wineries and they don't know what to do. They could have gotten overwhelmed and left. They could get nervous and leave, right? Or they may go in and try a bunch of wineries that they don't like and suddenly they have a bad impression of the brand. Now, I share this because what's key is my husband, again, is driving the traffic just like you're driving the traffic to your website. And then from there, he has to curate the experience, meaning he has to customize the experience for people, take them down the path that he wants them to go down, that he knows they're going to want to go down based on what he knows about his clients. So again, the reason why website visitors are leaving is because you're not curating the experience. Once you get people to your site, I oftentimes find that people from there um, don't actually fully take them down the path that you want to take them down. So you've got to start thinking about what is the path you want to take your website visitors down? What are the steps you want them to take to ultimately get to the goal that you want to achieve? So the money is really in creating a relationship with your website visitors and your list and your community. Customers who purchase products through email spend 130% more than those that don't receive email offers, you guys. So this, some people have said recently, I've heard a lot of people in the industry saying, oh, you don't need to do email anymore. That's so passe. But you guys, it still works. It still works. I promise you. So really, the money is about creating a relationship, okay? And the ROI of email is 3,800%. If it's hard to visualize, that's for every dollar spent, you make $38, right? So we know that it works to collect people's information, but we've got to do it in a way that they're actually going to take the action step that we want them to take. Okay, so today, you guys, we're going to go through seven simple steps. And I want to make this as simple as possible. So if you start taking these seven steps um, after today, um, you guys, you are going to start to notice a huge difference and you're going to start to notice that your website visitors are staying longer and longer. Okay. So step one, you've got to define that ideal client. Step two, you've got to get your ideal client to your website, right? Step three, we're going to talk about evaluating your website. This is crucial, you guys. I find so often that I forget this all the time to actually take a step back and evaluate. Step four, we're going to talk about creating an irresistible offer um, that captures interest in emails. And it's not just going to be that standard, hey, you've got to create a free offer. I'm going to break down and show you how. Step five, um, I'm going to show you how to actually implement everything, right? So from there, you've got everything. You're feeling really good, but now you need to implement it. You need to do it in a simple way. Uh, step six is timing is everything. Remember, I talked about, you know, people popping out at you at the kiosk. Um, it can be really overwhelming. So I'm going to show you how to have the right timing. And then step seven is how to iterate it and make it even better. Okay, so let's dive in. You guys, so I want you to type in the chat, how many of you know your ideal client? How many of you have taken the time to really lay it out? Because the first thing I always tell people is you always have to take a step back, right? So you really got to think about what, who is your ideal client, right? Who is the person that's actually coming to your website? Um, yeah, she keeps the volume over time. Totally, right? When I had an ideal client for my business, I broke it down really, really um, narrow. And over time, she actually grew up and evolved and got older. So what's key is taking really, you know, taking some time to really evaluate who that ideal client is. Now, there's three great things that are super important to get figure out your ideal client. One, you want to know what their pain points are, right? What are the biggest challenges they are facing? Um, what are they Googling looking for a solution for? What are they typing into Google? This is key because when they're coming to your website, they are looking for solutions. So step two is really what, what, so what challenges are they facing? And then what, again, are they looking for solutions for? And then from there, you guys, you've got to narrow down that ideal client. So I always tell people, get as narrow as possible. Um, that doesn't mean other people aren't going to come your way to your site, but it allows you to start really customizing the journey people have. If you know, and I'll give an example, 
My ideal client in the past was Sarah. She was overwhelmed with marketing and business. She didn't know what steps to take um, in her business and she needed a step-by-step -step action plan. She always Googled for, how do I get more clients in the door? How do I create a marketing plan? How do I get a step-by-step -step plan, right? So I'm gonna show you an example shortly of the message that we used to meet Sarah with on my old website because it worked really well because we met her with her pain points. So step one, you've gotta define that in client, ideal client. Now, if you have your ideal client profile I really encourage you to take a look at it dust off um, dust it off if it's been a while don't even worry about it um, but I always think it's great to do a quarterly check-in and just check it out ask yourself you know um, has her have their pain points changed um, you know what solutions are they seeking really just start to narrow it down so that you can make sure that your website and your brand is really appealing to your ideal client so before you even think about your website you've got to talk about your ideal client because then step um, from there we'll talk about step two which is getting them to your site and this is just a fun example of what I did years ago um, in my old business. Um, I had like pictures of my ideal client. I had some fun words that describe my ideal client. Um, I had some like imagery, all this kind of stuff. You can make it fun, you guys. Canva.com is one of my favorite sites that's super easy and fun to just pop in and create some imagery. Um, this is how I made this. And so, you know, really lay out your ideal client, write out who they are. Um, and if you're not sure, take some time to ask your past clients that were your like favorite clients. Or another top tip I have for you is oftentimes I find your ideal client was you in the past. I find that we start businesses because we um, had a challenge, something that we we're facing and we don't want someone else to go through it, whether it be a health journey, a business journey, whatever it is. So oftentimes I find the ideal client is you in the past. So I'd really encourage you to think about it in those few ways and start to really map it out. Okay, so once you've mapped out the ideal client, right, you know who you're speaking to, then you have to get your ideal client to your website. And that's key. So you guys, here's where going back to that myth, you could go get all the traffic in the world, right? You could go pay for ads, you could go pay for Google ads. In fact, I was talking to a friend of mine that runs a travel agency today. She was telling me that they spend $25,000 a month on AdWords, yet they're still not getting the right clients to their site, right? Yet, I find people that um, just focus on providing really great content or just hanging out with their ideal clients or hanging out and building community that don't spend a dime and they're able to get far more conversions on their site, you guys. So it's not about the numbers. So how do you actually get your ideal client to your website? Well, there's three things that are super, super important that I want you to write down, okay? Step one, where is your ideal client, okay? So here's an example. If you're, we're talking about Sarah, who was my ideal client in my business in the past, I knew that Sarah liked to hang out on Instagram and she also loved to hang out at in-person local events. So what did I do? Um, I focused on in-person female entrepreneur events in San Diego because I knew that's where she was. And then I also focused all of our efforts on Instagram. And that was it. I really focused on that. I took people on those. I drove them back to our website. I had free offers on our site and that helped me to start to grow my brand and my business okay so where is your ideal client I'm gonna tell you something and I hope that you believe me in this and I hope it feels really good and a relief to you you do not have to be everywhere online you guys what you do have to do is focus on where your ideal client is and show up consistently create community there really start to grow your brand there okay if you try to be everywhere online or in the community you're gonna spread yourself thin so I want to give you permission to start hacking things that don't really work for you okay but you've got to know where that ideal client's hanging out then from there I always tell people what lights you up so if you find that your ideal client is on Instagram every single day but they're also on LinkedIn and they're also on Facebook and when you look at Facebook you're just like I never want to go there on a there again, then go ahead and focus on maybe Instagram or LinkedIn, okay? Um, because if you absolutely hate it and um, you don't wanna get on there, you're probably not gonna hop on there and commit to it. Um, you've got to focus on what you can consistently commit to. So when you're thinking about where your ideal client is, where, you've gotta think about where are they hanging out? Like where are they showing up very often? What lights you up? and focus, right? Consistently commit and focus. Um, so I know we have a lot of coaches and I'd love for you to type in the chat. I know we've got more people joining. I'd love for you to share just what style business you have. If you have a coaching business, an e-commerce, a consulting business, maybe you're a designer, I'd love to hear from you. 
Um, but one of the things you really just want to think about is, um, again, identifying where those ideal clients are um, and showing up where they are. That is absolutely key. Okay, so that's step two, um, coaching and digital products. Awesome. Okay, so step one is you got to define the ideal client. Step two is you've got to get your ideal client back to your site, right? So you've got to know where to find them. Um, so only showing up where your ideal client is and starting to eliminate stuff that's spreading you too thin. Okay, um, so I always like to show this example, right? Um, these are all spending planning. Awesome, Diane. Thanks so much for sharing. Um, and is that um, consulting, I'm assuming, style? You, you actually do this one-on-one -on -one with people? I'd love to hear. Um, so if you look at this, these are all the many, many networks that are out there, and there's so much more, right? But these are all the different ways that you can like start showing up and building your business. Um, so one of the things I want you to think about, um, and I always tell people, I show this visual because you don't actually have to do all of these things. Again, you just have to focus in on where your ideal client is and what actually lights you up. OK, so you've got your ideal client. You know where they are. Now it's time to actually evaluate your website. OK, so I find that this step gets missed all of the time. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I'd love for you to, to share if you ever like just stop looking at your website or maybe, you know, you built it and you're like, oh, I don't want to look at it. I haven't updated it. I hear that all the time from people. OK, but once you know that ideal client and once you know where they are, uh, you've got to actually look at your ideal client or your website. OK, so first your ideal. I want you to put yourself in your ideal client's shoes. Um, ask yourself. Are there calls to action on here that I'm actually enticed by, that I'm excited about? Okay, first step, so take some time to actually put yourself in your ideal client's shoes. If you still can't see what's going on on the site, I would suggest asking a past client, a friend, um, or someone that you know that's your ideal client and asking for maybe 20 to 30 minutes of their time. Hop on Skype or Zoom with them and have them walk through your site and give you feedback live. Um, and ask them, you know, what what like draws your attention in? Are you excited by that offer? Would you click on that? Get some more feedback from them. Step two is eliminating the clutter, you guys. Clutter is one of the things on sites that I find actually gets people to hop off. So I always tell people some of the simplest sites actually convert better, and it's 100% true. I've seen some of the sites that are not very like well designed, but they're so simple. People know from start to finish what to do on the site. So I want you to start to evaluate, is my site simple? Um, are there any things intruding? Some things you can kind of look for is maybe you have a pop-up that displays immediately. Let's start timing that to display after 30 or 60 seconds. I'm going to show you how to do that in just a second in Hello Bar. Um, or perhaps you have something um, that, you know, is just intrusive. Maybe there's not an X in something that pops up. I've seen this a lot lately. Like there's no way to get out of the pop-up and then it's really annoying. That is not what you want to do. You want to make it as simple as possible for people to exit any sort of calls to action um, because otherwise they're going to be leaving and then it affects user experience. OK, so eliminating the clutter and then lastly, focus on the pain point. Right. Um, so identifying like, are am I speaking to my ideal clients pain points, the challenges and providing them with a solution? And I'm going to show you what that looks like in an actual um, text version just shortly. But step three is we really got to evaluate your website. OK, that's super important. So take some time, put yourself in your user's shoes and just navigate the site as if you were a user. You know, our product manager at Hello Bar actually always likes to watch me navigate parts of the app so he can see where I get held up. So every time we launch a new thing um, within Hello Bar, we, he watches us go through it and then he sees like when I'm like trying to click something, it's not working or I'm trying to look for something, it's not working. That's how we know um, how to shift and change something, okay? So step three, you've got your ideal client, you've got, you know where they're hanging out. Now you've got to evaluate your site and make sure that it's like the right fit for them, right? Um, make sure that they're going to be so excited and raise their hand to say, yes, I want what they, what's going on here. Okay. So step four is actually creating that irresistible offer. After you know, um, who your ideal client is, right? You've got to have an offer on your site that's so irresistible that they're going to be so excited that they're going to have to say, heck yes. Now, I'm sure you've heard about this free offer before, right? We, there's a lot of talk about it. There's been a lot of talk for years. Sometimes people call it lead magnets or opt-ins or things like that, right? Um, but the reality is what I want to talk about is what makes one better than the other. And I want to show you some examples of ones that have worked really, really well for us. Um, and I use this example. I always like to use my picture of my 80s gal because uh, it reminds me when I was a kid um, I used to go to my mom with my mom to aerobics class and when she would try out a new studio they would give like a free class right a free offer and I'd go with her so it always makes me laugh and the reality is 
free offers are all around us, whether you're going to the grocery store and they've got free samples there. Um, or maybe I know when I got married, my wedding photographer gave a free engagement shoot if we booked the wedding with her, right? These are all examples of something giving people something enticing um, to get them to book with you. Um, so what does this look like? Um, so many years ago, I actually wrote a book. Um, funny story, my husband and I were dating for a year and we broke up for a year. And while we broke up, I actually wrote a blog, I wrote a book, and then we ended up getting back together. So the ending is, of course, us getting married and getting back together. Um, but one of the things I did when I was trying to build my community for this book is I actually um, went ahead and gave away half the book for free as an opt-in, a free offer. And my goal with that was to gain interest, get people excited about it, and then send them off to Amazon to join the waitlist for the book. Um, so this is an example. It worked really well for me to grow my list. And some people may say, well, why would you give away half the book? Like maybe they don't need to read the rest. Um, but the goal is to give enough value you um, and excitement that they're like, I've got to figure out what happens next, right? Now, the flip side of this I saw when an offer wasn't done so well is I always download free books on my Kindle, or not free books, but samples of books on my Kindle. And I was looking to read a new book. I downloaded one that had gotten a lot of press and publicity, and it was only seven pages um, for the free sample. Now, I don't know about you, but in seven pages, I can't really tell if I'm going to like a book. Um, and this one, after seven pages, I was like, uh, there's nothing really throwing me over the edge. So I actually ended up not buying the book. So that's an example of like one, just giving a lot of value and then not giving much. And then people don't actually get a taste um, of what it's going to be like. Um, so I want to give you a few examples. I want to actually break this down, okay? Um, and one of the things I want you to remember is that you don't have to, giving a free offer away doesn't mean you have to go out and make this insane, crazy offer and hire a film crew and hire a designer. In fact, years ago, um, when I ran digital launches for my old uh, company, um, I had a boss that was in the fitness industry and he did a bunch of different online product launches. So when he did that, we did a four part free video series to promote the product launch um, and then sold the product in the end. Now, the first time we did the four part free video series, we actually just filmed them on the iPhone um, and then we collected email addresses and then ultimately sold people on the product. The second time we did it, we actually had it scripted. We had a whole film crew. We just made it a big extravaganza. The first launch actually made more than the second launch, okay? Um, so that just shows you the free offer in the first launch um, was so much better than the second, even though it wasn't all these bells and whistles with, you know, video uh, crews and everything like that. And the reason why is because the first launch had a ton of value. The second launch was scripted. Um, there wasn't many takeaways and learning lessons, and everyone knew my boss for always having, like, really strong learning lessons. Um, so it just shows you that as long as you can give people quick wins and give them a lot of value that they can actually take away and take action on, they're far more likely um, to continue on versus um, hiring a fancy film crew and, and making it this big extravaganza. Okay, so here's another example. I want to break down a few examples about how we would actually create a free offer because I want you to see it live. Okay, um, so let's say you're an online fitness coach. Okay, so you're a health and wellness coach. Um, your goal is to help people get super healthy. Um, when people come to you, uh, they're you know overweight. They're not feeling good in their skin. Um, they just feel really unhealthy and unenergetic. Right. So they're coming to you for a solution. They see that you're super energetic, um, very high energy. Um, they love your the what you talk about, what you promote, um, and they really want your help and the solution. OK, so what do you give them as a free offer when they're coming to you? Well, there's a few things that you could do. So, you know, the solution is that they want to feel more energetic, more vibrant and comfortable in their own skin. Um, so maybe you could take a part of, let's say you have a 30 day course um, that teaches them how to do all this. Maybe you look at that course and you say, what are the like most effective parts of this course? What are some things that could get these people some quick wins that are going to make them feel so good that they're going to be like, I want more. So maybe it's like five days of drinking lemon water in the morning, not drinking that afternoon coffee um, and having, you know, morning meditation and mantra. 
just putting it out there, right? Um, and then from there, you give them that in the free giveaway. So maybe it's like a five day mini challenge, energy challenge, um, and you collect their information. And then ultimately they're like, wow, this is amazing, so much value here. Then they may end up buying your product in the end, right? Um, or perhaps you could use something like a quiz. I'm gonna show you how we used a quiz. It worked really well as a free offer. Um, it actually helped us collect a ton of email addresses. So what you really wanna think about when you're thinking about this is, what is your ultimate goal, okay? So what do you ultimately want them to do? If you have a coaching package and you sign up, we want them to sign up for a coaching package, you have to ask yourself, what action steps do they need to take before they're going to sign up as a coach, uh, as one of my clients? So Diane said she's a consultant with individuals on their personal spending. This is an awesome example, right? So what do you know to be true that you have to do before they're usually willing to sign on with you? Maybe it's a free call um, and it's a 40, you know, 45 minute free call with you where you map out um, and, and kind of go through some of the challenges they're facing in their finances and then share with them the next steps, right? And invite them to work with you. Um, perhaps it's like a budget tracker that you've put together, Diane, and it's like um, this budget tracker that's helped you save money um, and, you know, save over this amount in the last year. And then they put in their email address. Okay, so I'm going to show you an example of two different ways to do this in a second, but you've got to ask yourself, what is the what is the action step that they need to take to ultimately buy what I want them to buy? So when it comes to your site and it comes to your free offer, I really encourage you to map out your customer journey. What are the steps they need to take? What is your ultimate goal? Do you want them to buy a coaching package from you? Do you want them to buy a product from you? Where do you ultimately want them to land? And then ask yourself what steps they need to take before they can get there. Okay, so this is an example. Um, we did this same kind of philosophy on nutritionsecrets.com. This is an old site that we used to own um, years back. Um, so when we started this site, uh, it was a health and wellness fitness site. Um, we were doing health and wellness coaching. We were originally collecting around, this is actually wrong, it was 10 emails per day um, with just a little side opt-in on the website. So here's what we did. We took some time. We thought about why people were coming to the website, what they were looking for, again, what challenges they were facing, um, and what solutions they were seeking. So we realized they wanted support in their weight loss journey. They were having trouble with their health and wellness. So what we did is we created a quiz with a software called Lead Quizzes. It's super simple. We created it in a minimal amount of time. And then we took Hello Bar and we used one of our page takeovers, which I'll show you what that looks like in just a little bit. Um, and we put a link to the quiz. Um, we put a link to the quiz, and then from there, people took the quiz, uh, they put in their email addresses, and then it gave them their um, little plan of attack for the goals that they had, right? So that's an example of something that actually helped us go from collecting 10 emails a day to 50. And the reason why was two parts. We made it interactive and exciting, and then we also had it display on one of our Hello Bar page takeovers, because before it was kind of hidden on the site, off to the side. So really wanted to start to think about making your offer very present on your site. Okay, um, so another example is if maybe you have more e-commerce or products, right? Um, so these are some of my favorite pairs of shoes. They're called Teeks. Um, they're really awesome, but they're also $175, right? So I can't tell you how many times I go on their site and think about buying them, but then don't ultimately buy them. Um, so one of the things you find with e-commerce sites more often is that people um, aren't as apt to buy as quickly, um, and they need a little bit of urgency to kind of throw them over the edge. So what I may do with an e-commerce site is do some sort of really nice savings, um, maybe give away like a gift card if you're trying to collect email addresses. So um, we did this recently with a site where we collected email addresses and then we gave away a gift card every week um, to somebody new that signed up. So we just did like a little raffle, right? Just start to think about things that would be really enticing. Free shipping works really well on e-commerce. Um, percentage savings always works really well. Um, there's a, there's, you just have to start to think about how you can actually throw someone over the edge. Now, one top tip, and I'll show you really quickly or just a little bit how you do this, is for e-commerce, one of the things that works really well for us is a page takeover, so a hello bar page takeover upon exit, meaning someone's about to hit the URL bar and leave your site, and then you have it display. So I'll talk shortly about timing too, right? So you can have the right message, but if you have the wrong time and you're like that intruding immediately upon people, they may exit out. So that's why we love to display a lot of things on exit, especially on e-commerce, because they were going to leave your site anyway. Now you're just giving them a reason to stay. Um, so here's another example of a coaching business. Um, and this is a real life example that I used or actually did. 
Um, so again, I mentioned earlier that I used to have a coaching business. And one of the things we had was very high end coaching packages. It was almost $5,000 to work with us. So we knew that people weren't going to buy right away from us on the site, right? We knew the action step that they had to take before they were going to buy from us was getting on the phone from us. So what, what we did is we started to think about what are the problems that people tell us that they have? So we did a lot of business style coaching. Um, so what we found was People always told us that they wanted to get more clients in the door. They couldn't figure out how to get more clients in the door. And then the second thing they said was the reason why I'm not getting more clients in the door is because of the fact that I'm really bad at marketing. I'm really bad at social media marketing. So problems were that they need to get more clients in the door. Um, and they thought the reason why they had the problem is because they were really bad at marketing, right? So this is what we did. Um, we did two different hello bar. This is a page takeover upon exit. The first one asked them a question, ready to be bring paying clients in the door? Let us give you the step-by-step -step plan. And what we did with this one is this button actually just took people to our application page. They filled out the application. Um, and then from there, we got on the phone with them. Again, we just looked out, they got to the site. What do we need to, what action step do we need them to take before they're going to be willing to talk, to hire us? And we knew that we had to get them on a call. So then from there, we said, okay, let's use a hello bar to get them to that next step, right? Hello bar really is like an assistant. That's what I look at it like. But we met them most importantly with their pain points, ready to bring pain clients to the door. Let us give you the step by step plan, right? The other thing people said on the phone often was, I need a step-by-step -step plan. Please show me how. So really starting to think about what are things that are coming up? What are your ideal clients seeking? And for us in this instance, we knew that the like, know, and trust factor was going to be key. We knew that people weren't going to hire us unless they liked, know, um, they knew us, and they trusted us. So the best way for us to do that was to get them on the phone. But then we also tried something else that worked ridiculously well. Um, so both of these converted very, very well. Um, I'll talk in a little bit about conversion rate. Um, but standardly, a good conversion rate means meaning someone's taking the action step you want them to take. So they're clicking the button or they're putting in their email address is two to three percent. Um, but these both got over three percent. So remember, I said they thought their problem was marketing and they were really bad at social media marketing. So we also met them with one of these. We tested this. Are you ready to stop wasting time? We thought so. Check out our 30 Instagram posts in 30 minutes. And they put in their email address. So with this instant, what we did is we collected their email. We sent them the webinar so it could warm them up and they could get to know us. Then from there, we used our email series to start to introduce ourselves to them, share more information about ourselves, and then invite them to a coaching call. So this is kind of shows you two alternatives alternatives for my coaches out there of ways to start um, actually, you know, collecting email addresses, but also just taking people to your consultation page. And ultimately, you guys, it depends on your goal. So if your goal is just to get people to the consultation page, then you would use something like the first one. If your goal is maybe to collect email addresses and get more consultations, then you'd maybe use something like the second one. Um, so the key is, you guys, value first plus a catchy title equals a conversion, right? Now, a catchy title is key. I always tell people the greatest place to find the catchy titles is at the grocery store um, or when you're scrolling along the internet or scrolling along Facebook. Um, that's where I always find my best titles um, and kind of get my inspiration from. Another site that I love is called BuzzSumo, B-U-Z-Z, sumo.com. Um, that actually is a really great site where you can see awesome headlines. Um, so grocery store, uh, Facebook, social media, all really amazing places to um, get headlines. But we ultimately want to think about when you're crafting your headline about your free offer is, again, what are they seeking? Remember, they were seeking paying clients in the door. So I just simply said, do you want more paying clients in the door? It doesn't have to be complex, just something very simple addressing what their pain point is. And then I showed them the solution. Hey, guess what? Click this button. And I'm going to show you how to get those paying clients in the door. OK, so first, you've got to have that offer with that's super valuable. And then you've got to have that catchy title. So some top tips on your free offer. Um, if you ask a yes, no question, I'm going to show you an example of what this looks like shortly. Uh, you usually get 20 percent to 30 percent more leads. So maybe you see on a site, do you want to get more clients in the door? Yes or no. And if you click yes, it's like, great, let me show you how. If you click no, they'll say something like maybe, are you sure you don't want me to show you how to get more clients? Now, you have to be very careful with these yes, no questions. You don't want to come off rude to people. Um, and sometimes I see them and they're just very condescending and rude. So just make sure you're actually like really th being thoughtful and thinking about your ideal client. 
Um, step two or tip number two, journeys and courses convert better than ebooks. Um, again, for a course, you could do something like taking the, someone said they had digital courses. You could take your digital course that you have and just take a small portion of it and make that your free offer. Definitely offering your free offer throughout your site, um, through, you know, the homepage, the blog, header, and exit pop. I'll show you an exit pop shortly. A good lead magnet will generate five emails for every 100 unique visitors. Uh, on neilpatel.com, we roughly generate about 7.4 emails for every 100 unique visitors. And then again, I mentioned a good conversion rate is standing around 2 to 3%. Okay, so those are some top tips on your free offers. Okay, so you've got your offer, you're ready to go, you know your ideal client, you're speaking to them, everything's in line, you're feeling really good. Now from there, you've got to implement and test, right? Um, at the end of the day, um, it's super important to dive in and actually implement. And that's actually why I love Hello Bar um, a lot. You know, we've been really focused and dedicated on making Hello Bar as simple as possible so that once you have that offer and once you know, you know, what you're putting out there, you can just pop it into one of our Hello Bar templates um, and just literally move forward. So I think it's pretty cool because oftentimes, I don't know about you, but I've like hopped into technology and feel like I'm in a technology vortex. Can anyone relate? Like you don't know um, how to use half the technologies out there or maybe you buy one and you're like, I'm not sure I feel like I need hours and hours of help. Um, to figure this out. And that's why I love Hello Bar so much because we've really tried to make it as simple as possible for you to implement it. Um, so this is my pup puppy dog, Walter, and this is my baby niece, Scotty. I always love to use him as, as an example because the reality is um, Walter is very similar to Hello Bar. Um, so I mentioned earlier that my husband is in sales. And one of the funny things is I'll call my husband um, during his work week and I'll ask him where he is. And he says, oh, I'm on the road. I got my sales assistant, Walter, with me. Um, and I laugh every time because my husband calls our puppy dog a sales assistant because he notices when he brings him to an account, he always helps with the sale, right? Um, I'm personally biased. I think he's totally adorable, but um, luckily he's super friendly too, so that helps. Um, so I look at Hello Bar um, and calls to action <laughs> um, on your site really as a sales assistant, right? So you're getting people a site. You know you're getting the right traffic. You're hanging out in the right places. You've got this awesome offer. Now you just need a little assistance in throwing them over the edge. So remember that example earlier where we had Hello, um, we had an opt-in just on the side, and then when we used Hello Bar, we went from collecting 10 emails to 50 emails a day? That's an example, right? It was hidden before, and Hello Bar made it really visible. Um, so, you know, funny story, I know I mentioned earlier, but Neil actually used to pay designers two to three thousand dollars plus developers to actually get these kind of things live on a site. Um, and the worst part is he didn't even know if it worked. So it wasn't very um, it wasn't a very good use of time, energy and money. Um, so that's why I'm super pumped, because one of the things that's really cool about Hello Bar is you don't have to be a designer. You don't have to be a developer. You can literally just hop in. So I thought I'd just take a quick moment and I wanted to just share some things that, you know, I've been talking about today. Um, I'm going to turn my screen share on so you guys can see this. Um, and I'm just going to pop in the app just for a minute. Uh, we're not going to spend a crazy amount of time in here, but I just thought I would show you a little bit more about what Hello Bar does. Um, so you've got that offer. You're ready to go. From there, Hello Bar will ask you what your uh, goal is. So you can actually collect email addresses. You can target a URL, meaning you could take someone to a different page on your website. You can just make an announcement, not actually have um, any clicks or buttons. You can actually take people to your social media page. So maybe um, you want people to drive back to your social media page. You can do that as well. So from there, let's say your goal is to target a URL, right? So you would hit next. Um, and then you can choose from any of our assets. So this is our bar um, that just hangs out at the top or you can have it at the bottom. This is great if you want to have something like a little less intrusive, you're still kind of on the edge about pop up something easy. Uh, this is the modal center of the screen and in Hello Bar you can actually edit the text really easily, change the font, add in your color codes, um, or you can use our pre-designed templates, you don't have to think about it. Slider, this is a fun little one that I always like. Um, it's not very intrusive, it just kind of slides on over. This is the page takeover, you guys. This one actually works the best for us. And funny story about this, Google did a lot of testing um, about a year and a half ago, user testing. They found that they uh, reported that this style pop-up that takes over the screen and has the X is the least intrusive. Um, so that was a feedback from people. Funny, I wouldn't have thought that, um, but ironically, it actually works really well for us. So page takeover, this is something that um, when I showed you the example that I used in my past coaching business, this is what I used. And then just a little alert bell is another one. 
And then from there, you can literally change your template. You can choose any of the templates that we have, and we're just constantly adding more templates in, so it makes it pretty easy for you. Um, and then you can actually decide when it displays. So this, I think, is super important. We're going to talk about timing in a second. Um, but you can actually say, I want this to only display on exit, meaning someone goes and hits the URL bar. That's the only time it displays. You can have it display on a delay. Um, or if you're a little more advanced and you're using like heat mapping tools and stuff on your site, um, which basically just shows you where people are popping off on your site and what they're doing. Um, you could do after scrolling a little to the middle or the bottom. So just a few examples to show you. And then from there, one of the other cool things is you can actually say only display this every, you know, five days, seven days. And then you can actually choose which pages on your site um, you want people to see this on. You can say, I only want to show it on this page or I only want to show it on that page. That's how you start to get into like not being intrusive. Um, so that's just a little bit more about inside the app and, and implementing. Um, so let me go back to our slideshow. Let's keep going along. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's just a little bit more inside the app. But I, like I said, our secret weapon is our page takeover upon exit. I love this. This is actually one that's currently live on our hellobar.com site. Uh, you guys, this brings us an extra 900 signups a month. It works really, really well for us because we know that people are coming to us because they want users to stop leaving their site. So we're meeting them again with those pain points and saying, hey, we have a solution. Oh, wait, and it's free. So this is another example that works really well. Um, just some other fun templates. And the coolest thing I think is that I actually created all these in under five minutes, you guys. Um, so we make it really easy for you to get these live. And that way you can start to think about what works and what doesn't. So remember the yes, no question. This is an example of a yes, no question, right? Do you want more traffic to your site? You can create this within Hello Bar. Um, this worked really, really well for us um, on neilpatel.com. It actually helped um, him bring over 100,000 new email addresses. So it, it he always recommends that, especially when we're looking at client sites and, and it's not performing as much as we want. We always try a yes, no question, and it works really well. Um, and then just some other fun ones that you can use. Again, you could have a click goal. You don't have to collect email. You can collect email. Multiple options. Okay, so you guys, you've got it implemented. You're ready to go. Um, you've got everything good to go. Now, timing is everything, okay? Uh, so I want to use an example of timing. What the heck does yoga have to do with timing, right? Well, this is one of my favorite examples. Um, so let's say you go to a clothing store. You're about to buy a new outfit, um, and somebody just pops out right at you, right when you walk in. They're like, hey, do you want to buy this? Or, hey, do you need help? I don't know about you, but I'm always like, oh, my gosh. Um, I kind of take a step back and get really overwhelmed, right? Um, so that's what it's like when you're displaying your pop-ups immediately. And if you are currently doing this or have done this, please don't be shy. Don't worry about it. I've done it multiple times. Um, I actually didn't know how important timing was until, until I started working at Hello Bar two years ago. So that just shows you. Um, so let's say another example. So I always love to use the example of Lululemon, a yoga store. Um, and so when you walk into Lululemon, Standardly, uh, you'll just get a warm introduction, and that's their dofi, director of first impressions. So this person simply greets you, um, you feel welcome, they're not asking you a bunch of questions um, or bombarding you, right? Kind of like somebody's getting to your site, um, you give them a little bit to look, take a look around, then you have something pop up that assists them to get them to where you want them to go, right? So as you start to look around Lululemon, what you'll notice is if you're looking at an item for over 30 seconds, they have a rule, right? They're edu there are people on the floor called educators, not sales associates. Um, so they come up to you and they're gonna give you a quick fact about that item, um, and then that's it. They're gonna probably most likely walk away, right? Um, so this is an example um, of literally just timing and just really kind of having that sales assistant along the journey, but not being there, being in people's faces and bombarding them, right? That's why I always love this yoga example. And I think in 2017, their sales were $2.4 billion. So they definitely got the sales process down pat. But the key is, you guys, is just really making the timing right. So a few top tips here. I heavily suggest not displaying your pop-ups immediately. Um, that's actually something that we even took out of Hello Bar so people don't have that option because we know it's that intrusive. Um, I always say wait a little bit. So um, I would say if you're not familiar with what people are doing on your site, maybe you don't have something like Google Analytics installed, um, definitely install it. But you know, if it all feels overwhelming to you, then just have it display upon 30 seconds or upon exit. If you do have Google Analytics on your site and you're a little bit more advanced, um, just take a look at what people are doing on your site. If they're leaving your site, you could have it display on exit. 
If they're staying on your site for a while, you can wait to have it display. Um, so timing is everything, okay? So you've got everything going, you've got it implemented, you time it right, right? The next step is really just to iterate it and make it better. So Neil always says to us that A-B testing is key. So what is A-B testing? It means that you implement one of our hello bars and then you create a variation of it, right? And it's really simple in hello bar. Um, you literally just hit this little drop down button and hit create variation. You can change whatever you want in the text hit publish, and that's literally it. Um, from there, Hello Bar does all the work for you. It tells you which variation is working better. Um, now, if this overwhelms you, literally don't even worry about testing to start, just get your pop-ups live. Then from there, in the future, you can look at testing. For those of you that are a little bit more intermediate and advanced and you're like, I wanna test it, we make it really, really simple for you. Okay, um, so here's our approach to testing. Less is more, okay? You don't have to create 30 variations of pop-ups or things like that. Um, here's what we do with clients. We actually take a look at their Google Analytics, um, if they do have it set up, and we look at the pages that are getting the most traffic, meaning they're getting the most people to the site. I know Kelly mentioned earlier when we chatted that she has like a blog page that works really, really well. So that would be an example we say, okay, Kelly, let's use that blog page um, and let's display an offer on there. Now let's talk about, you know, everything we talked about here today your ideal client, what they're looking for, what they're seeking. Um, and then we would put hello bar on there. And what we would do is we'd test a few variations of it. Now, when we start with testing hello bar, we actually only change text. We don't change any of the graphics, any of the colors. We keep it all the same. And we just change some headlines and see what headlines work better. Then from there, um, we may change graphics or if we're getting the conversion rate we want, we just use that pop-up and we put it site-wide. It's literally that simple. Um, so that's kind of our philosophy, right? It's just literally taking a look at where people are going, testing it, finding the winning variation, the one that's working the best, and then putting it all over the site. Now, again, if you're a beginner, I would just say put it everywhere. Don't worry about where you're gonna put it. Um, if you're more advanced, you can kind of get into more of those testing things. Either way, you can literally do it all in just a few minutes in Hello Bar, okay? So how do you know when work it's working? Well, Hello Bar will tell you, don't worry. Um, so it will actually say what your conversion rate is. So if you see in this slide, it actually said, um, you know, conversion rate here is 10.6% and this one's 2.1%, right? So it actually tells you um, what's working, what's not working. Um, and then from there, you can decide if you wanna modify it or not. But again, one to 2% is good, two to 3% is great, above 3% is amazing. Um, and you guys, I can't tell you how many times we've gotten like way below 1%. We just keep testing some more text. Um, and we, as long as we just keep testing, um, then from there, Hello Bar will tell us what's working and what's not, and we move on from there, okay? So it's all about testing. We don't always knock it out of the park, believe me. <laughs> um, so I wanted to circle back to Cord Buddy. Um, remember I told you I'd break this down for you. Um, so again, when Travis came to us, he had a goal. He wanted to get more e-commerce sales. Um, we knew that people that came to his website already knew him. They were his ideal client. Um, they were coming because of him. So what we did is we, we tried two pop-ups, right? The first one, we collected a ton of email addresses. So this is a great example. If your goal is just to collect email addresses, do something like this. So we had them put in their email address to get the free savings. Um, and that converted well um, and got a pretty good amount of revenue. This is just revenue generated from Hello Bar, right? It was $1,500 per month from Hello Bar. Um, so that was option one. So we collected enough emails, but then we're like, you know what? Our goal really is more e-commerce sales than e email. So we're going to shift it. We literally made one change. We just didn't make people put in their email address to get the offer. And we actually put the offer straight away on the pop-up. From there, we actually increased the conversion rate to 2.8%. And the revenue generated from Hello Bar from that varied from $6,000 to $10,000 additional per month. Okay, so that's an example to show you just like one simple tweak that literally took under 30 seconds in Hello Bar made a huge difference. So that's why it's so important, you guys. You've got to get aligned with your goals. What do you ultimately want people to do? Okay, so at the end of the day, you guys, when it comes down to it, you've got to just put yourself in your user's shoes. I can't emphasize this enough. So biggest takeaways today, to find that ideal client, figure out where they're hanging out, um, get them over to your site, and then have that awesome offer, display it, time it right, and just launch it, you guys. Um, and this doesn't mean you have to revamp everything you're doing. I would just take away from this and say, okay, what are the things that I'm not currently doing um, that you know are part of this training? Okay, let me start there. Or what are the things that I think I could refine? Maybe you have all this in place, but now it's time to just put yourself in your user's shoes and just refine. That's what I want you to start to think about. You don't need to take on everything at once. Um, just start simply um, and make sure, most importantly, you're putting yourself 
in your ideal client's shoes. And so one of the things I talked to Kelly about is I wanted to be able to offer you guys an opportunity to try Hello Bar for free. Um, when I was a business owner, I always hated that I would go on webinars and then I would get to the end and have to buy a bunch of stuff. And <laughs> it just didn't feel very good to us as the Hello Bar team. Um, so, you know, one of the things I noticed is you'll enter into these uh, email marketing systems or softwares that you buy and they're super overwhelming. And I think we've done a really amazing job of keeping Hello Bar as simple as possible. This is our team, super proud of us um, and the team that we've developed. Again, one of the coolest things about Hello Bar is that we have a team of digital marketers and everyone really cares. Um, in fact, when you talk to our specialists online um, in chat, we're all talking to each other all day long to make sure that we're getting people the best results possible. So we're super passionate about what we do. Um, and I think we've created a pretty simple, awesome product that's allowing you to get these offers and, and get more people on your site taking the action stuff that you want them to take. Um, so what I asked Kelly um, if it was okay to do is to actually give you guys a free 30 days of Hello Bar. I wanted you to be able to try it. So this is actually our growth version. Um, our growth version is standardly $29 per month, but I wanted to give you guys time to actually try it um, and see if you'd like it. We're not really big believers in making you pay for something that you're not going to like. It's really important to us that you actually just are able to, uh, you know, give it a try, see if it works for you and move from there. Um, so my only request for you with this is actually just giving it a try. And if you love it, amazing. I'm super excited. If you don't, I'd love your feedback. We're always trying to make this product um, better and better. And I'd love for you um, to share more about Hello Bar um, and what you what you're looking for in here. Um, but I didn't just want to give you the software because, again, I mentioned earlier, one of our biggest things that we're so passionate about is making you successful as business owners. And I think oftentimes software is just one part of that. Right. And there's a million softwares out there. But I think what makes us unique um, is our team and our background in digital marketing and entrepreneurship and making business owners successful. So there's a few awesome bonuses that you're going to get when you sign up for this free 30 day trial of Hello Bar. And I'm super excited about them. Uh, so the first one is fill in the blank. Uh, tested headline and email templates. So again, I wanted you to be able to take everything we talked about here today and get started with it right away. Um, so we find that the number one thing that holds people back is headlines. So we actually have templates for you that you can just literally fill in the blank. Um, and then I also asked my team to put together some email templates so that when you actually put together that free offer, you had emails to send people after. Um, so we've got fill in the blank email templates that literally are specifically for a free offer. So you'll be able to just pop in your branding, your wording, your messaging and get them live really quickly. That way, when you're collecting emails, you're actually sending people notes after. Um, the second is our accelerated marketing course. There's only so much time we had here today, and hopefully you've found what we've talked about valuable, but I know oftentimes um, you want to take it a step further. So this bonus of our accelerated free marketing course um, is actually going to take everything we talked about here today and go more in depth. So headlines, you're going to get a total lesson on psychology behind it, um, how to actually um, everything from headlines to autoresponders to collecting emails, you name it, we go very in depth in this course and it's broken out into six modules for you. Um, and all these bonuses are free with a free trial. You actually get to keep these bonuses um, whether you stay on the free trial or not. It's just my gift to you today for showing up for yourself and for your business and being here. Um, so the third thing, and I'm, I, well, I'm excited about all of them, but I think this is pretty amazing, too, is you get access to our dedicated marketing specialists. So our dedicated marketing specialists are a team of digital marketers that are there inside our Hello Bar app. Um, actually ready to answer all your marketing questions. Um, we helped you if you aren't sure if your free offer is good or not, we'll give you some advice on it. If you're not sure why one of your Hello Bar pop-ups is not working, we'll help you. We'll hop into your account and see what needs to be tweaked or changed. Um, if you're really not sure about a headline, we'll write one for you. Um, so really excited about this team. So with the free 30-day trial, you actually get access to our team. And then if you stay on after that on our growth plan, you get an additional three months of our team. So pretty amazing. Um, so what's going to happen, I've activated the offer. And when you click for the free offer, you'll actually be taken to a page to put in your website URL. Um, I didn't want you to have any surprises, so I just wanted to quickly walk you through the product or the walk you through the steps and then we'll get to Q&A. Um, so type your chat, type your questions in the chat. I want to hear from you. Um, so from there, you'll be prompted to put in your email address, your name um, to start your free 30 day trial. 
And then from there, we will ask for credit card information. I didn't want you to be surprised by this or shocked by this. Your card will not be charged until after the 30 days and you will get notifications in your email before your card is charged at all. I wanna be fully transparent. Um, I don't want you guys to have any surprises. And again, it's really easy to cancel. Um, if you don't like it, um, anytime within the 30 days, you can cancel super easily by just emailing our team. We'll get it all taken care of for, for you right away. So just wanted to make sure there are no surprises in the sign up process for you. Again, you will be notified um, before anything is charged at all. And then after 30 days, I hope you stay on and I hope you love it. Um, and if you don't, my only request is that you just give it a try. You try implementing everything we've talked about here today um, and just give me feedback. Share more about your experience, what you liked, what you didn't like. I'd love to hear from you. And again, um, by signing up for this free trial, you get to keep all the awesome bonuses, uh, whether you stay with Hello Bar or not. All right. So um, I want to look at the chat, see what questions you have. Kelly, I'm so sorry. I know I went a little bit over. Um, I'd love to hop in with any questions that uh, may, may be coming up from you guys. And thank you so much for being here and staying over. Um, I know we were supposed to end about five minutes ago. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, I've got three pages left of notes, Lindsay, so it was amazing. It was really good. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> I have a, um, just a couple of highlights while um, people are uh, thinking about their questions. Um, as far as the ideal client, interesting, my, interestingly, mine's name is Lisa, um, and it just helps to be able to write copy to her, and every time I write an email or copy for a sales page or even an opt-in, that you're actually thinking about what would Lisa think? What would, you know, you keep putting yourself in her shoes. So I loved that. I thought that was great. Um, another thing that uh, popped out at me as well with the evaluating your website, one of my big aha moments was um, realising that I was using the language of client pathways to, to talk about soulful sales funnels, which is great, um, except my community knows, but anyone who's cold traffic has no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, so doing that evaluation is um, really important because sometimes you see things from a completely different point of view. Um, what else did I put little things? Quizzes, I loved that as well because they're interactive. They work really well um, for me. So there was a few little stars there on the examples you gave that I thought was um, excellent. And one of the things you did mention, Lindsay, was about um, I have lots of blog posts that bring in traffic and opt-ins, but there's one in particular which I think you were referring to, um, which is my media plan template blog post. and that blog post converts to opt-in at about 50 to 70 percent, depending on the type of year. But I'm thinking, wow, what if I put a, um, a takeover page as they were exiting? If you know, if there's certain keywords that I've identified in Google Analytics where they don't stay very long, um, and so they, those are the people that aren't opting in. So what could I be doing with those um, those people? That you know, another opportunity to sign up to an email list, to increase that even further, would be great. That's amazing. That is, that's like a huge opportunity. I love that. And, you know, we had someone that, um, had similar where they had one post that did really well. So what we asked them is like, okay, so from there, what's like the next step on the journey? Um, mm -hmm. like what else do they need to see or hear from you? Um, that will make them successful. And then we use that as the free offer. Um, so, or you can do something that totally relates to that. That's like a bonus. Um, you know, uh, maybe it's something done for you or whatever it may be. So I love that. That That's amazing. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, I liked it. It's just, this is where my note taking came in. There was lots of ideas coming out as you were showing the examples, because I think it's important to see, um, examples from other industries as well, just to, um, sometimes we look so much at our own industry and not in other industries, so that was great. Um, and I guess that one of the things with the, t the takeover, one of my questions is um, obviously having takeover pages for specific pages or do you tend to just have a takeover page that is consistent across the entire website or how do you, how do you um, work that? Yeah, such a great question. So standardly what we do is we actually start with the high traffic pages. So we would like say, okay, you've got that blog post. What are other few pages that you've got, um, that you've got a lot of traffic on? And we'll test, um, a few different 
variations on those. So we'll test like, you know, on the media packet page, we test one offer, we test another offer on another page and another offer on another page if you had multiple offers. Um, and then from there, once we find the one that works the best, then we put it across the site. Now, if you only had one offer and you're like, this is the only offer that I'd want to test, um, then we would basically create the hello bar. We'd create a few variations, just text variations, change the text test the offer on those few pages. And then once we found the text that worked the best, then we'd put it across the site. So we always start there because it gives us the biggest pool of people to test on. Um, and then we put it site-wide. Perfect, excellent. Um, one of my other questions was around which one works best, but you actually answered that during, the, during that. Um, uh, but I guess that's probably also different depending on the site. Do you find a different user types or is it very consistent that the, the page takeover um, re regardless of industry and, and um, audience tends to be the highest converter? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, we've found the page takeover is the highest, but I do think that it could depend on audience and what you're actually what's going on on your site. So I always think like the top bar is really good for promotions or announcements or like maybe you have a Halloween sale or maybe you have like a uh, uh, holiday sale, whatever it may be. That's always great. Um, like, and you have it up during that time. So we like to use those, uh, the top bar for like promotions and, and discounts and announcements. Also, I think the top bars are really good segue. So maybe you're looking at the page takeover and still a little bit nervous. Um, so, you know, that's a good way to do it in a way where you're starting to get your message out there. You're starting to assist people, take them down the path you want them to go without feeling like it's too intrusive because it kind of feels like it, you know, builds into the website. I will say modals within in like the center of the screen modals, those actually don't do very well. Most people think that those do a lot better, but we have not had great success with those. Huh, that's interesting. Because the one that I've seen, um, and I guess one of my final questions is around the yes, no questions. I see that a lot of people use um, humor in that. Um, does that work better in the yes, no, so that it doesn't come across as abrupt or or rude when you're, when you're asking those yes, no questions? Yeah, it's a good question. You know, I think in order to make sure it doesn't come abrupt, it's just about timing it right. So just, you know, not displaying it immediately, giving it a, you know, at least a good 10 to 30 seconds before you display it. Um, the yes, no questions get people to think, right? They get people to stop. So one that we had on Neil's site that worked really well was, do you want more traffic? Because we knew that people are coming to a site because they wanted more traffic. So when they hit yes, it says, great, I'm gonna show you how I get this many visitors to my site a month. When they hit no, it said, are you sure you don't want me to show you how I get this many visitors to my site a month? Um, yeah. So yeah, it's, I think, you know, if uh, yes, no works really well. So I think the answer is, yeah, definitely. I would try it. If you want to do a modal um, in the center of the screen, I would try that. Um, and I think it's, at the end of the day, it's so much just about testing. And that's why I like that hello bar just shows you the numbers because you can see like, okay, this worked, this didn't work. Uh, because we can think that this is how I would feel about something. And then Oddly enough, you're like, wow, this actually works better than any of them. Like, I can't tell you how many times I thought something wouldn't work and then I tested it. I was like, and it worked <laughs> or vice versa. So, no, that's fantastic. I have lots of notes now to go off and implement. So, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I think Diane had um, a question earlier. What do you think of questions to ask yourself before spending as an opt in? Um, maybe, Diane, if you could clarify that. Um, uh, I want to make sure to get, if you're still on, if not, um, feel free. Um, I can put my email in the chat so that you can email me after. Well, so I, think, I think what she's saying is um, uh, as an opt-in, having questions to ask yourself before spending, what do you think of that as an idea? Oh, yes, that's, how I'm it. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I'm reading it. I might be wrong, but... <laughs> Um, so as an opt-in, yeah, um, it's a good question. What do you think of questions to ask yourself? Um, yeah, it's a good question. I don't have any initial thoughts on that, but maybe let me think about that, Diane, um, and I can um, email you a better response. But offhand, I don't have a full response to that right now. No, that's great. 
Um, Diane, can you put, oh, actually, I can, if you can either message me your email address, um, I'm going to think about that a little more and I'll pop you, pop you a better response tomorrow. Cool. <laughs> Excellent. I don't know if there's anything else in there that I can see. I don't see anything else. Um, but of course, um, there'll also be um, a replay page where you can ask your questions in there and they actually will get sent to me directly. Perfect. That's great. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Lindsay. I really appreciate it and you've given so much um, value. It's been wonderful. Oh, good. Thank you so much. And Diane, I got your email address. I'm going to pop you over an answer by tomorrow morning, but I just want to think through it a little bit more before I give you an on-the-spot answer. So thank you. Thanks, Kelly. I really appreciate it. Not a problem. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.